Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you a video on how to have Unity Nav Mesh agents traverse an off mesh link using a custom animation based on the type of off mesh link. So what this means is if you have, let's say, a NPC that needs to jump over something, climb, you know, into a window, climb over a wall. Uh, that is possible in Unity using the built-in tools. So let's look at a quick example of that. All right, here in my Unity scene, I have two NPCs. These are basically simple nav mesh agents. They do have some additional scripts attached to them, but for this particular case, it, it doesn't really make a difference. So in the nav mesh agent, you're going to have some, some different settings in here. And one you're probably familiar with is auto traverse off mesh link. So right now I have that enabled on. So let's talk a little bit about the navigation mesh first before we jump too far into some of these settings. So if I click over into navigation here in Unity, there is the navigation mesh that I've already baked into this level. So in this level, I have a, a giant plane here that's marked as navigation static. So if I click on it and just go into static, you'll see navigation static. Um, and I also have this uh, 3D model here of a building. Um, I have some uh, just custom colliders, boxes and things that I've uh, just kind of manually placed on there. But this uh, particular building is also navigation static as well. And let's take a look at the settings when you actually click on an object. So with the, the building selected here or with the plane on the bottom, I can go into the object tab under navigation. And there's a setting here to generate off mesh links. You'll notice that it's disabled, so it's not checked. Uh, for the building as well, it is also disabled. So at this point, we have an agent that we would like to basically jump through this window and chase after our player. So our player is, is right over here in the scene and the uh, my nav mesh agents, which are the zombies, are out here. So in order to do this, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. This is the way I chose to do it. So even though in navigation, when you look at the off mesh links, they're not auto generated, but it doesn't mean that we can't explicitly add one. So what I've done is in the building here, I have uh, a series of, uh, right now, the, the game objects are just called cubes. Uh, so they're 3D, they're basically cubes. So if you right click on it and you go to 3D object and you click cube, that's what these are. Um, and then the cube itself is basically just scaled down. So I put two cubes per window. And this means that uh, in this case, there's two entry points. So I'm just using one off mesh link per cube. Uh, so you can see the component here, this off mesh link. So you can go in here and you can type in off mesh link. This is a Unity component, it's built in. And you have to give it a start and end a cost if it's bi-directional, so you can traverse in or out. Um, if it's activated, uh, auto update positions. So this is something I'm, I'm not currently using and navigation area. So if I go back to navigation, these uh, tabs across the top, there's one called areas. You'll notice that I have two custom ones right now. These are the built-in ones indicated by the word built-in. Uh, so this one here, which is called hurdle, is the one that we're gonna be using. So this is a custom one. And then this column here is the cost of the area. So you'll notice that jump has a higher cost than a walking area. So that'll help drive the nav mesh agent in its decisions when generating its navigation path. So hurdle, this is one that I just added in here and I just set it to one right now because I'm fine if the agents want to choose to jump over something that is the same cost as walking around something potentially. Uh, you'll also notice too that in the navigation mesh uh, there's a, because nav uh, off link uh, mesh generation is, is uh, is turned off for the building, you know, you'll see this kind of border here and, you know, you'll see the border on both sides, right? So this is just, you know, basically generated from the, uh, the agent configuration and its radius, right? So in this case, <clears throat> if we look 
If we zoom in here, you can probably see it. You can see this little circle here from the navigation mesh, uh, and then a little arrow, and then you know the arrow, it just kind of goes through from one point to the other, and it, it points in both directions. So this is actually the visual of the nav, get, uh, nav link mesh. So if I click on this cube here, I'll expand it. You'll see there's two empty game objects. Uh, there, so there's just a transform and it's on a it's got a start and an end it's just what i named it so these off off mesh links are essentially what gives the mesh the additional behavior versus letting the object itself generate so sometimes leaving it on for the object can generate lots of different off mesh links and we don't want that behavior we want very well defined specific links in this case so by just putting this object here, basically marking it uh, navigation static, um, and then under, under the navigation here, so I, I've got my top level object, my cube, not start and end selected here. Um, I basically have it as navigation static, and it is generating off mesh links. Um, and then you can set the navigation area here to hurdle. So this is that area that we defined under areas. So now that it's selected, we just create two additional game objects here, a start and an end. And then inside of the, the cube still in the game component, uh, we have the off mesh link. We assign a start and an end. Um, and then you know, we set up these parameters and you'll notice here that we, we set navigation area to hurdle. So what that does is if you look at the navigation mesh here, you'll notice this, this color, this green color here, and over here it's blue, so if I click on areas. You'll notice that each area within the navigation mesh has its own mostly distinct color. So hurdle in this case is green. If I changed it to fall, it would change to this uh, like magenta type color here. Uh, the idea is that <clears throat> this is actually showing you the, the different nav area. So what will happen is the agent will move towards it. Here, let's just hit play and watch a quick demo. So what will happen is right now my nav mesh agents are aware of my target here and they're, they're pathing towards the target. If I click on it and I look at the actual nav mesh agent, you'll see its, uh, its path being generated and then he'll hop, he'll basically move to the start, transition to the end, and then continue on his way. So this is part of it, right? So if I set up the cube, I set the area, I set this uh, off mesh link component and the start and the end on it. And, you know, I indicate it's, it's bi-directional, so they'll, they'll turn around. Let me demo that real quick just to kind of prove that that works. Um, so, you know, we can essentially see that they'll, you know, they'll navigate and then they'll, um, you know, traverse it in one direction and then traverse it in the other. So I'll just take my, my player target here. I'll let them jump through and then move it back and you'll see he'll jump through the other way. So the rotation of the character is basically, you know, controlled by, in this case, custom code. You can just let the nav mesh agent generate your rotation. It's up to you. But now that you have the, the nav mesh set up and, and basically if you're baking it at this point, you should see these little circles and you should see the arrow. If you don't, you know, one thing you want to do is you just want to go into your object and just make sure that the 3D surface is you know, mostly in line with this one. Uh, so things like your step height, step height here and max slope under the agent setting in the navigation mesh will uh, potentially change that. So if I took this object and I raised it up, let's say this high, and then I baked it, you'll see that it's no longer considering this part of the mesh because it's outside of the you know, the parameters of the step height or the slope. So if I move it back and I bake it, uh, also something to be aware of is that when I turn off this, so that's probably a question you're wondering is I, I don't really want these to be visible. So you can turn them off and, and essentially have, you know, an object that you can move around uh, that's not actually rendering anything and is just, um, you know, you, you technically don't need the, uh, the box collider either. Um, so you could technically have these objects, turn them on, and just be a placeholder in the scene to kind of generate this mesh. So this is um, just how I'm choosing to do it. I could probably do it other ways. All right, so let's talk about um, how does the agent, you know, do this actual hurdle, right? How is it playing the animation? What kind of logic's involved? Um, so if I click on one of the agents here, 
under the nav mesh agent itself. Now that we've created that new area mask, we can come into here and make sure that it's selected. So this is now an area that it's considering. So if for some reason your agents get stuck at kind of the boundary, like you know you have this the gap in the mesh, but they're not traversing it, you probably just want to check that auto traverse is turned on, um, maybe even auto repath. But then the area mask has the the um, you know particular area your links are using. So now at this point, the agent's going to consider that to be a viable path. The path is generated and baked into the path mesh. So let's talk a little bit about how the animation is set. So right now, I basically have an animation called Vault. Uh, so this Vault animation here, it's just a simple animation and the name of its Vault, um, and it plays and then it, it transitions out. So you know, essentially, if I look in the preview, that's you know what it looks like down here. So with this Vault animation in place and ready to play, um, <clears throat> let's talk about triggering it from the code. So I am using root motion for my agents. Um, now, technically, the way the root motion works for a nav uh, mesh agent is the nav mesh agent actually controls the simulation and the um, root motion is synced with it. So basically what that means is that root motion is um, secondary and then the speed of the navigation agent is actually driving the uh, you know, the, that traversal speed within the animation, it's, it's translation. Um, so the idea here in, inside of the code, uh, so this is my, my character uh, inside of Unity, it's my, my base character code. Um, the idea here is that on the nav mesh agent itself, there's a property called is on off mesh link. Uh, the off mesh link has a, a struct here, so you can actually pull current off mesh link data. Um, and then what that'll let you do is it'll let you uh, have access to the area. So you could, you know, pre-compute these and instead of doing it all the time. Uh, but the idea is it'll, it'll essentially allow you to, to compare to say, okay, am I on this area? So I have a, a fall one and I have a, a hurdle or a vault one. Um, and the idea here is that, you know, if, uh, you know, if my agent's enabled and it's on the mesh and the area that I'm in is this, uh, hurdle area, then, you know, go ahead and play and then set this, um, you know, set hurdling to true. Um, and then when he is no longer on an off mesh, I just uh, re reset these things. Uh, so essentially, this is just kind of, you know, uh, recording the state so you don't try to play it, you know, more than once. But um, this is essentially what, what makes the animation play when you reach that off mesh link. Um, and it's it's basically that easy. So one other setting in Unity that's pretty interesting here, if you don't know about it, is when you click on an animation, you can add animation behavior. So you can see this add behavior button here and you can generate a script. Uh, this particular one uh, is something I was kind of experimenting with. What this allowed me to do was create a simple animation behavior. So when the state is entered and exit, I can change the uh, speed of the agent. So essentially what happens here is when it enters the state, it, it basically changes the agent speed to uh, like a hard-coded value. And then, and then after the animation, we reset it back to the same speed that it entered the state with. Um, so what this allows me to do is kind of control how quickly the agent can uh, you know, traverse the, um, the threshold. So, if I go ahead and I just bump that up to 0.8 instead of 0.5, which is what the original value was, and then I go back in and I play the scene, just as an example, you'll see that the agent will traverse uh, you know, the off mesh link. He'll just go from start to end a little faster. And sometimes this is, uh, you know, this value is, is really good if you have agents that move at different speeds. So you'll see he'll go a little faster. And in this particular case, he'll start clipping the wall because he's traversing too quickly. So if you have, uh, you know, based on how quickly the animation is, how quick the agent is, that's how you can kind of control the uh, agent speed um, and then them, you know, essentially clipping the wall or not. Um, and again, the main reason for this and, and you know, setting the speed here is the fact that the nav mesh agent has auto traverse uh, off mesh link enabled.
So if you disable this, uh, you could essentially drive the transform change via code, and you you know don't have to let the Unity Nav Mesh agent do it itself. Um, in my case, I left it on, and I chose to just have an animation behavior and just you know tweak that value a little bit until it it looked reasonably good. All right, um, that's basically it for the video. Please like the video and subscribe if you're interested in more topics around game development or uh, C Sharp or JavaScript. I plan to release more videos in the future. Um, also, check in the description below. I'll include a link to the root uh, motion nav mesh agent video on YouTube that I followed. I thought it was a great video, and it really kind of nails some of the gaps that the Unity documentation has. So, thanks.